What's going on guys? So I'm back again and this is part 2 of the Xbox 360 refurbish project and so far I've already fixed up the power supply and got it all nice and new looking so now we're just going to be working on the console itself so as you can see it's pretty filthy so first up we're just going to rip it down and um, clean it so if you've never pulled apart a 360 before it's not as complicated as you think um, there's no external screws on it. It's all held together with retention using just plastic clips. So that all pops off. Oh. That uh, sync button's busted. Oops. Okay, so first up, I'm just going to remove this crappy sticker that EB Games put on there and made a mess of everything. Um, <clears throat> so what I've got here is I've got a Xbox opening tool, I guess you could call it. Um, if you don't have one of those, you can just use a small flathead screwdriver to do it. But uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to pop off this top piece first, then the bottom piece, unclip the front, and then unclip the back and it should come apart. And underneath here we've got a whole abundance of screws. The screws with the flat tops screw down into the top plastic housing. So they're the ones we're going to remove first. All the rest hold down the motherboard, so the ones that are rounded off and these little black ones here. So if I just pick this up, no screws left in it, pull the eject button out, which just pops up, probably replace that with a chrome one. Yeah, so this is a sort of like halfway between. Um, as far as the heat sinks go, you have after this unit, um, they kept this larger heat sink. The very first launch models had um, a smaller CPU heat sink with a heat pipe on it, and then they later replaced it with this bigger one to sort of prevent them from getting overheating and everything. And after that, they replaced the GPU's heatsink with one with a heat pipe on it. So they sort of swapped things around there. And as you can see, the fine fellows at EB Games busted this off, or it got busted off in shipping or something, but it doesn't surprise me. So what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to rip this top piece off. If I can find some pliers. Yeah. So I'm going to have to cut away here and um, try and get this top housing off. Or the remaining part of the top housing anyway. Okay, so to save you the boredom of me pulling this whole thing apart, um, I've stripped down the console down to just the motherboard. So I can give all the plastic pieces a nice good wash. Um, the board's actually fairly clean. It's just covered in really fine dust, so that will just blow off. It's not um, not as bad as some of the other ones I've seen. Um, this is a refurb, by the way, if I didn't mention that before. Um, so a few little interesting little tidbits on the board. Um, the GPU looks like it has been reflowed before because the um, bottom of it's got lots of uh, flux residue and um, you can see some of the flux has come out of the solder underneath on all these uh, capacitors and things. Um, they are sort of gone a bit yellow, which is no problem. Um, yeah, not a whole lot on here, it just needs to be cleaned. Um, if I had some more isopropyl, 
I would um, give the whole board a nice good wash, but uh, I still haven't got around to ordering in a new drum of it, so that will have to be for another day. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna clean up all this. Um, the fans are filthy, they are Nyadek fans. Um, I'm assuming they're pretty good. This is the three pin variant. It just uses a normal fan header, like on a PC. Um, the other versions use a four pin Molex style connector. But yeah. So I'll get onto this and I'll be back in a little bit. Um, I'm going to strip down the DVD drive as well and wash all the plastic pieces for it too. Uh, by the way, the DVD drive is a. I think it's a Ben Q by the looks of it. Philips light on, sorry. Yeah, it's a Philips drive. And I do have a spare one of these somewhere um, to rip a pickup out of if this one's completely screwed. But yeah, I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so while everything's just drying off, uh, I thought I would just clean up the motherboard here. I've um, dusted it all off, as you can see. It's nice and clean. Um, because this is a refurb, um, the board is actually immaculate. Like, um, before it was pretty dirty looking, but that was just very loose surface dust. Um, probably because the person who owned this before me probably didn't have carpet or pets or anything. Um, generally with, whenever I'd open up an Xbox or something or any other console, it's usually filled with really heavy, dirty dust. More like mud than dust. Whereas this is really, really fine, like, um, yeah, I'm not going to talk too much about dust. It's kind of boring. Um, so yeah, I've just dusted it off with this little brushy doodad. And it's all nice and clean. And now that's all that's really left to do is just to clean up the, um, the tops of the dies here and get off all this thermal paste. Um, I don't actually know what sort of thermal paste Microsoft uses. It looks a bit like a, a silver based one, but um, not very much. It doesn't look quite the same and it's pretty hard. It's like it's some sort of like epoxy instead. Um, what a lot of people sort of get confused with or like just don't understand is the reason why these fail isn't really to do with the thermal paste at all. Like that doesn't make much difference at all. And it hasn't got too much to do with the heat sink. It does in a way, but in another way it doesn't. The main problem here is this PCB is a little bit thin, the PS3 is worse, and um, because this is using a BGA um, for the package mounting type, um, it can't pull out enough heat underneath the processor here. That's the main problem, well I believe that's the main problem why these things break up, because if, if, the, if this side of the package wasn't getting cooled enough then the processor would just burn out. But it's only the um, solder underneath that's getting bad. Now people say, oh, it's because it's lead free or whatever. Lead free solder's been around for years. Like heaps of other things have used it. Like the original Xbox, it used lead free solder. It used a BGA package on both the um, both the processors, and it rarely ever had a problem. Don't forget that these are a bigger. They pull more current and everything. They're a larger die and they produce more heat. But with that, the size of the heat sink's been increased as well and the cooling efficiency is better. So it's really just to do with, I reckon it's just more to do with just this PCB here that it's all mounted onto. Like it's a little bit thinner than, a, than the uh, original Xbox and lots of other ones. Only by a couple mil. I think it's mainly to do with like Stuff like your ground plane and things, because it isn't as big, it can't suck out the heat from underneath here properly. So like, if you were to make up something to stick on the back of here, like, manage to stick a heat sink on the back, and one on the front, on the top here as well, you'd probably find that it would never fail, just because it just cools it. What I'm basically trying to say here is, it's not, it's not so much about cooling just the top, you have to remember that the bottom gets warm too. 
and it sort of breaks up the solder. But anyway, I digress. I think that's the right word. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to use this little plastic pry tool. It's all chewed up and everything. It's pretty much useless as a pry tool. And I'm just going to slide it along here. Sorry, I got a block nose. <laughs> yeah, this stuff comes off all right. Um, just one thing to note, if, if this is probably the first couple times you're doing this, just try and be careful around these um, surface mount components on top of the, um, especially the GPU, because it's got a few smaller ones, a few smaller capacitors and things. Um, the CPU isn't as bad, it's got these other packages here, I don't know what they are. I'll probably have to look it up, or whatever, they're probably like some sort of like MOSFET or something. And um, yeah, just be careful with those because they can break off pretty easily. There's not much holding them on. Okay, so it's the next day now, and all the parts have dried and everything. All the bits I had to glue back together are all dried as well. And this is what the finished motherboard looks like once it focuses. It came out really nice. It looks a lot nicer in real life. Um, yeah, I'll drop the picture down a bit. Um, yeah, it came out quite nice. It's nice and clean. As I said before, the, the dust on it was only really like really light surface dust. And what I was mentioning before when I said um, I like to make things look as new as they possibly can when I'm finished working on them is um, what I've done here. Sorry, I'll take that off autofocus. What I've done here is um, I've gone in and replaced the original silver tape that uh, holds the DVD drive sort of in a bit. Um, it's just stuck there while they're putting the console together so the DVD drive doesn't fall out when it's running along the assembly line. Another thing is, um, is uh, these black screws here. I'll focus that one in. There we go. Um, Normally when you take out these screws, because they're painted black, they get scratched really easily and they just look horrible. So I've got a tip for um, anyone that's looking to sort of refurbish consoles or even just fix them up or whatever or mod them, is invest in one of these. Yeah, it's just a paint marker. It's different to a normal Sharpie or anything like that. It's actually made out of proper paint. And um, basically all you do is once you've screwed your screws in, uh, you just dab this on it and just pump it once and a bit of paint comes out and it covers up all the little scratch marks in the screws so now it doesn't even look like these screws have even been taken out. I'm sure if you looked really closely underneath this with like a microscope or something you could probably see where the paint is but um, just to the naked eye it looks pretty neat. Uh, the external housing here or the mid chassis, um, yeah it came out quite nice. There's no rust in this console. Um, a lot of 360s get kind of rusty, um, but whoever owned this before me obviously had it in the right conditions and it didn't go rusty. Uh, along with the top here, I've probably can't see that, it's really bright. Um, I've scrubbed all this, I washed it and everything, gave it a quick little scrub with a magic eraser just to get rid of some of that um, rubbed in dirt. Uh, along the... Ooh, sorry, I'm shaking everywhere. Uh, with this top heat shield here, uh, the heat RF shield, what do you want to call it? Um, I had to pull it off to get, it un get underneath here, and clean it all up and make it look all pretty. And when I was putting it back on, there was two spare plastic lugs sticking out. So all I did was just grab my pliers and an old scalpel, scalpel blade and I just heated up the blade with a hot air gun, got it to about 200 degrees and then just pressed it on there and squished it down. So now it's held back in the same as normal, didn't have to glue it in or anything. Uh, with the DVD lug mount thing here, whatever you want to call it, I um, don't know if you can actually see that. But it's all glued back in. It's dried overnight, so excuse me, it'll be good. Um, yeah, uh, I still need to clean up the focus. Still need to clean up the um, 
glue residue from those stickers on the front, but that's no problem. Um, here's the front bezel. I decided to put the chrome bezel back on it, or put a chrome bezel on it. I haven't got the chrome eject key. Um, sort of in two worlds. I can either replace the um, just that key for about five dollars or something, or I can replace the entire housing and the hard drive housing with a um, Halo edition, which is what I really want. I want to get a special edition console, and that's probably about fifty bucks on eBay. There's a seller in the US who's got like a million of them, and they're selling them. Um, didn't do anything to this front daughter board here. Didn't need to. The switch is actually fine. Um, I fixed up the front panel a little bit. Um, what I did, I didn't fix the flap. I'll have to replace the whole front panel, but um, yeah, fix all that up. Fixed the ah, stupid thing. I fixed the um, there we go. I fixed the uh, sync button thing here, and I'll focus that in. What I've done here is I've just uh, stuck it back on and then put some epoxy resin over the top. So it'll just move a little bit so you can still press the sync button. Uh, with the with the power key here, what I did here was I just heated up these little spring pieces here. And then as they were nice and warm and a bit malleable, I just pushed them down and it made it sit nice and flush. Um, yeah, so that's about it for the console. Um, one thing I did do is I left the original X clamps on. Um, a lot of people say, oh, that's a bad idea because it'll just wreck it. But the thing is, the X clamps are only there as a placeholder to hold the um, heat sinks on while you're putting it all together. Um, they don't actually put very much pressure at all on the board or anything like they just sit there they just hold it just in place and you can tell because before you screw the motherboard down and put in those uh, little T8 screws in the bottom there the heat sinks can move like you can wriggle them around a little bit and that's obvious that they're not putting any pressure on there at all um, these are the refurb X clamps they use a slightly different um, plastic lug on the bottom I think it's a bit shorter so it doesn't put as much pressure on there at all um, what really holds the heat sinks down is just these four screws on the bottom, or eight. Um, they pull it down nice and even, and it's all held rigid with the bottom of the case here. So replacing those X clamps with screws is a bit pointless. It just makes things worse um, because you're not putting even pressure on there unless you're using a torque wrench. And another thing is because the screws are slightly bigger on the bottom, uh, it does warp the board slightly. Um, Microsoft spent millions of dollars engineering this, and I think they wouldn't be that silly to um, mount a heatsink incorrectly. As I said before, the main problem with these is it's just the package mounting that's the issue. Um, they're mounted on a BGA, but the main problem is is the uh, PCB underneath probably isn't quite thick enough or it doesn't have a big enough ground plane underneath the um, two BGAs here. So what's happening is it just can't suck the heat out of the bottom because that's the part that's failing. It's just underneath it's failing, the solder is failing. Um, probably the best way to reverse engineer it and fix it without designing a whole new PCB would be to do a BGA to LGA conversion where you would um, take off both processes and normal LGA sockets, like what you use in your PC and everything, they're mounted to the motherboard using a BGA, so you wouldn't have to modify the board at all. All you would have to do is get a custom LGA socket installed or engineered up and stuck in there. And the BGA underneath an, underneath an LGA socket probably wouldn't fail because the pins or the nubs in the LGA socket should provide enough thermal, thermal mass that um, the solder underneath doesn't get too hot. And you probably shouldn't need to modify the processor package at all. 
Um, you could probably get away with making a um, LJ socket the same pitch and everything as the um, stock pads, but I don't know how well that would work. But it would be an easy workaround. You could just um, make a small daughter board that sits in between the um, CPU package on a VGA going to an LGA um, breakout, sort of a pinout, if that makes sense, just like an extra PCB underneath. And it would only add probably, well, I'd say if you did it right, it would probably only add about half a centimetre of thickness to it. And that's well within the limits of the um, housing and everything on the stock console. Like you could drop it up that much higher and it wouldn't be an issue. Um, and you'd be adding so much extra thermal mass to the um, BGA that it should sink out the heat. It should um, pull, pull out that heat so it wouldn't, um, the solder wouldn't break down. Um, yeah, and that's probably a pretty easy way to do it. Uh, I could probably track down some of original Microsoft um, warranty labels because you can get them from China. There's a company that makes them, but um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not dodgy. I won't do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all done. So I'll just throw this console back together, and we'll be done with the console side of it. And I'll leave the controllers and the hard drive for another video. So. If you liked the video, thumbs it up and thanks for watching. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe, it really helps me out. Also you can find me on Twitter and on my website, I'll put the links in the description. Thanks again and I'll see you in my next video.